Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Morgan and I am obsessed with all things beauty and skincare related and in today's video we're going to discuss whether or not skincare ingredients actually lie or don't lie. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. I'm constantly talking about skincare, doing luxury skincare reviews, and doing fun vlogs on beauty and fashion. You guys, so a lot of skincare influencers, like, like they often say they're very, very obsessed with what's on the back of the bottles and jars because the idea and the notion is skincare ingredients don't lie, okay? If you guys watch Hiram, he's super, like, he actually says that. Skincare ingredients don't lie, bitch. I mean, I think he even has, like, merchandise for it. Um, and a lot of other, like, really prominent skincare influencers talk about ingredients and they kind of hold a lot of value in the ingredients on whether or not they're going to provide a good review for the company and the brand and the product. And so I... I have mixed feelings about that, but I used to be, if I never said this before on my channel, I used to be a paralegal in my past life prior to being an influencer. So I did a lot of legal research and I researched a lot of regulations on different topics. And then I just decided I'm going to put my paralegal hat on. I'm going to dive into the FTA and I'm going to dive right into the regulations, the code of federal regulations for skincare products, how things are packaged and how they're listed and legally dive in to whether ingredients can potentially lie to us or not. But let's, let's pull up the facts. Let's pull up some legal legal research that I have done on the regulations of skincare ingredients is it does state that the FDA does not have legal authority to approve cosmetics before being sold. They don't have to review it. However, they do have to approve their labeling. They have a lot of say in how a product is presented to users, especially when it comes to marketing and labeling. That is what they are confirming most. They do regulate the packaging and the labeling. That any reactions that you get from skincare products can be reported to the Federal Drug Administrations or FDA for short. So if you do have some serious bad reaction to any product that you have tried, report it. You have the authority to and they want to know. AKA, don't make a video bitching about it, actually report it. You have that right. Let's talk about the packaging because that's what the FDA concerns themselves with. Um, the packaging must not be misleading, must show the address of the manufacturer and the amount in the product. So every time you get a skincare product, it must show how much is in the packaging, which is right here. Then it must show the name and the address of the distributor that these products are made at. Also, what I want to say is on their list, the FDA states within the regulation that soap is not considered a cosmetic. It is a different, so like when you see soap, I don't, I haven't seen soap. Um, really, I don't recall seeing the word soap in ingredients. I don't think they can. Also, that's why I have like a big disdain against the word soap when you're using skincare products because it's actually not a cosmetic and that's honestly illegal and an inaccurate thing to state. So a cosmetic per the FDA regulations is a product except soap intended to be applied to the human body for cleansing, beautifying, promoting attractiveness, or altering the appearance. I mean, are we really promoting attractiveness? I feel like skincare is really promoting health more than it promotes attractiveness. But this also is applied to makeup within their federal reg the, the regulations. So uh, when it comes to skincare, um, it's promoting health for me. Cosmetics are can also be considered a drug if it additionally helps treat or prevent a disease or otherwise affect the structure or function of the human body. All cartons and labeling must show the ingredients declaration. That's the ingredients declaration. They are legally required to show you this information. I also have the like the federal regulations that's attached to everything that I'm stating just because I want to put this in black and white on my channel. That's why some of the things that I'm saying might be like, yeah, dumb Morgan, but some people might not know. And because I went the extra mile and looked up the legal, the, the legal analysis of all this stuff, I want to have a video like this for my channel so we all know set in stone. Keep in mind, 
federal codes and regulations also can change from time to time. Okay, so ingredients must be declared in descending order of predominance, color additives. So that kind of co goes in line with, you know, how people say like the first five or 10 ingredients are the most potent. That is true and confirmed per the FDA regulations. They have to legally put the most active ingredients and the most dominant ingredients first. And then as they go down, they become less frequent and dominant. Ingredients present at 1% or less may be determined without regard or predominance. So meaning, so you have all of your dominant ingredients right up front between the first five and 10 ingredients. And then as the products descend, once they become 1% or less, there's not really a specific order they need to be listed on. So that was news to me because sometimes you'll see perfume listed decently high on the list. However, if it's 1% or less, it really doesn't matter the order they have them listed in. I'm gonna go ahead and assume and hope that these skincare companies are smart and that they list them in a specific order, but also, does it really matter? Perfume and products is scary. However, it, dep it does depend where it is on the list. If it's within the first five or 10, then that's probably not good, especially the first five. But if it's 1% or, le or less, and it's kind of just mixed in with all these other ingredients, is that really as terrible as people are trying to make it seem? I don't know, that's your opinion. But for the FDA standards, we really don't know how much perfume or other bad quote unquote ingredients are in the products. So how can we say whether or not the, the ingredients lie? Yes, they're listed in front of us, but really we have zero idea of how much of each ingredient is within the product. <sighs> That's kind of up for debate. Ingredients accepted by the FDA are exempt. Okay, so here's another thing. Ingredients accepted by the Federal Drug Administration are exempt from public disclosure. It may be stated as other ingredients, meaning that the FDA has a list of accepted ingredients. Those accepted ingredients that are totally considered safe in the FDA standards, you don't even have to list them. So there could be ingredients in this product that we don't know about because they don't legally have to state it. Therefore, we really don't know what's made up of all of these ingredients, especially like I always love to refer back to the original creme de la mer and the miracle broth. broth. There is no way in determining how much of each ingredient or even, or even the specific ingredients they're using because the Federal Drug Administration doesn't require them to state it if it's totally considered safe. Then it also reminds me, and I'm so happy that my previous video with Jackie Ina, she does state it is impossible to make a skincare dupe because there is no way of knowing what's in each product. There is no such thing as a dupe. There is no such thing as a creme de la mer dupe, first aid beauty dupe, a this dupe, a that dupe. I mean, if you wanna make it similar and smell and texture, I guess, but really there's just no way of knowing. So to say that ingredients don't lie, you guys kinda have to take that with a grain of salt and kind of keep your eyes open to what's happening legally than just what's black and white on the back of a product. All ingredients that are drugs must be listed as active ingredients before cosmetic ingredients, which is something that I think is discussed, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. Um, I mean, it's true. It's, there's, it's right in the Code of Federal Regulations for the FDA. It, if it is considered a drug, meaning it's used to aid, help heal the body or whatever disease or condition or whatever, those active ingredients need to be listed first. Pay attention to those because those are gonna be the strongest. And you also wanna know, or at least, you're not gonna ever know, but you wanna at least have an idea of how much it's within the product. Do you know what I mean? Especially if it's a drug. Per the FDA, the ingredients Fonts and verbiage must be no less than 1 16th of an inch in height without obscuring designs. So when you look at the back of a packaging, the packaging, that's why you're gonna see ingredients right here, very, very clearly listed. They can be no smaller than 1 16th of an inch. I just thought that was pretty neat because it's like, 
I don't know. I just think that's pretty cool, right? Like they have to, and they can't put any other thing in the way. Like it has, like there could be no other obscuring objects or anything like that. If for some reason you guys ever come across a skincare product and it doesn't have any of these like things right here that's up to code, don't use it because God only knows what it's made out of, all right? Um, so a lot of it does go in legally when it comes to lying and, um, you know, physically what you see on the back of a packaging. But if you see nothing, it's illegal. Don't even put it on your skin. The mail order distributor has to send a list of all ingredients to any person requesting it. Name and address of distributor must be listed on the labeling. So if you additionally want to request ingredients, which I might do in a video because that's kind of cool. I want to see the difference. Is there a difference? You could do that. That's why it's listed on the back of the packaging. The expirations are just rules of thumb. If the products aren't stored properly, they can expire much sooner. So if you see a date there, it's not black and white set in stone. It's just an idea of when the product can go bad. So even like the Caudalie, when I was sold an expired product, um, the expired, the expiration date is just a rule of thumb. It's not exact. And also if it's not being stored properly. So the reason why my lips broke out so bad was probably because the product was sitting under a light in the store for God only knows how long and probably wasn't stored properly, which is why I probably got an allergic reaction. So if I'm past the expiration date, God only knows what the heck happened to that product that was illegal within the Sephora store. I'm sure they can cover their bases because it wasn't opened, but, but if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, they sold me quote unquote, kind of an unsafe illegal product, but that's for another day, another video. Actually, I'm gonna post that video up here too for you guys, that actually happened to me. So you guys, that is it for the legal research that I performed in ingredients. And I guess the moral of this video and the story is whether or not ingredients can lie or not. I think it is definitely possible that ingredients can lie in the sense that they could be withholding information from us. So when you ever talk to people where it's like, well, I didn't lie because I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't tell you, right? You ever, were you ever in a relationship where somebody's like, I never lied, I, you know, I just didn't say it. Just because you didn't say it doesn't mean you didn't lie about it. I mean, you still didn't disclose it to us. So, and you're not telling us how much of each of these ingredients are in there and the percentage, if it's like 1% or less, is it really as bad as we're saying or really as good as we're saying? I consider that lying. So all in all, I think ingredients in shorts could potentially lie. You guys have to stay woke to what works on your skin. You can't listen to every beauty influencer on what's the best for your skin and what's the worst for your skin. That's why I get a little salty when I see influencers being like, drugstore products are just as good as, is, you know, luxury products. And really it just doesn't work that way. And especially if they're trying to say it's a dupe. It just doesn't work that way. So legally I can say, ingredients do lie, bitch. Everybody, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, I love to keep you guys woke. I love to stay woke. I wanna know the real tea and what's going on. Again, I buy all my own products myself so I really don't care what other people say or think of me and what I choose to release to the world. And also, um, I think in one of the videos somebody stated that it was unethical and not responsible. I was being unethical and unresponsible in sharing luxury skincare products and how good they think they are to the public. And being, in, in, in other words, because I watched their videos, being, on, being ethical is providing affordable products for people. And you guys, those videos can also be unethical. So honestly, it works both ways. My advice to you guys is I wouldn't put up a wall to any of the influencers, whether you're a luxury lover or a drugstore affordable lover. There is a argument to be had for both. Really, you have to buy the products that you are most comfortable with and try not to judge products based on price. You guys really have to find the products that work specifically for your skin. You guys need to be the confident ones. You guys need to feel like spending $100 on a toner is worth it to you. And no judgments. And 
And that's it. So just, I wanna say be open-minded to both luxury and affordability, and let's all just be in the skincare community together and support each other. I love you guys. Thanks so much for hanging in there, and uh, stay healthy. Bye.